We're going to be dealing with a difficult subject on today's program. My team and I wanted to caution you if you have young children watching at home with you, you might want to use discretion in viewing this next clip as it has adult content. Yeah, look, look, fatigue, nice little gumdrops, pretty face, pretty eyes. That's what you're looking for. What do you mean gumdrops? Gumdrops, not, not too big, not too little. Oh. Mouth full. Okay, so, so your, your fee, like we said, I'll give you 100. Well, that's a bonus. That's a bonus, guys. You should get one twenty five. Uh, well, he talked about a hundred. Okay, hundred's good. But again, I just want to make sure that you're you're happy. Uh, like sex is okay. That that's what the yeah, you understand. Because yeah, yeah. when I called before on the phone, she, she thought you wanted want to, to dance. But I explained to her, it's not to dance. It's to. On our program today is a woman who could not ignore these major civil crimes against women and children. She's here to educate us today about sex trafficking and what we can do to prevent this from happening as well as restoring the lives it has broken when we return. In 1998, Congresswoman Linda Smith was in India and looked into the very face of desperation as she witnessed women and children being forced into prostitution. Compelled to do something to combat this, she founded Shared Hope International. Please welcome Linda to our show today. We're so happy that you're here. Thank you for being here. It's good to be with you. This is a tough subject, Linda. Share with us a little bit about how Shared Hope even got started. I said no. You said no. I'd, I'd received a call from a man in my congressional office that kept telling me about caged little girls. And I've been a human rights activist since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And But I couldn't believe the exaggeration, I thought, but I couldn't sleep. So I took one of my staff and I went to India because I needed to see. I spent the first night in India in a brothel. I often say I went from Congress to brothel. Uh. and. Um, it was horrible. I saw girls younger than my 11-year-old granddaughter, caged conditions being sold to men every 15 minutes. And then I found out about them. And I thought, I can't, I can't face this. Mm -hmm. God, you made me as a businesswoman, a, a policymaker. You put all this into me. Why don't I just organize a home? So I did. Okay. I called home, called a friend, called my husband and said I need $25,000. My friend asked me how much I needed from her and I said all of it. And within three days we started the first home for those girls I saw. And I found they, ha they were mommies, mm -hmm. they had babies under their beds. Oh, they were often 13, 14, 15 years old. They'd been sold at 11, 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, they weren't women, but they were called women because they were used in prostitution. Anywhere a woman's called a prostitute she does not get justice. Any time she's used, whether of her own free will or not, she will be perceived as bad, and that's in India, anywhere in the world. But there's, that's where I started, and I told God no because it seemed too big, too many girls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he simply said to me, James, Linda, faith without works is dead, and works is touching these girls. Mm. And so from that I started the first home, and I thought I would be done. But the girls need other stuff. Yes. And then I had seven homes and then nine and two countries and then seven. And it grew real fast. <laughs> 